Hello everybody and welcome back to The Wooden Otter. Today is the first episode of a new series that I'm calling The Mystic Melange. It's my attempt at making props of as many 5th edition magical items as I possibly can. I've always been intrigued by the magical items spread throughout the D&D rulebooks and haven't really had a chance to use many of them in my games, despite their beautiful artwork and descriptions. For the first episode, we're starting simple, with the Letter of Recommendation, found on page 229 of the Dungeon Master's Guide. Let's jump right into it. So if I'm going to be writing a scroll, uh, I need to actually have some text. So uh, those are the fonts that I used in order to write this scroll and the website where I downloaded them from. I've used DA font before. And you can see here I've just written a scroll and then rewritten it in multiple languages, Dwarvish and Elvish. Next step, obviously, is to find some nice paper in order to print my scroll out on. Uh, I didn't record actually printing it, but you get the idea of how a printer works, I hope. The next step is aging the paper. So I've chosen to use the T method, simply dunking the sheets into a cookie sheet filled with a few tea bags worth of tea. I dried them in my oven and they get a really nice wrinkly appearance, although I did tone that down by weighing them down under a book overnight uh, just to take the edge off of the really robust crinkles. Now the image shows the scroll mounted on a rod uh, capped with a few end caps to kind of protect the the scroll itself so for this I'm actually using these wooden caps uh, that are actually like a, a dowel end and a disc that I've epoxied together and then I drill out uh, some holes in order to mount on the end of my 3 inch dowel this will be the structural support for the scroll and I just use a little bit more two-part epoxy in order to stick this end cap on. Really getting that epoxy in there. This is five minute epoxy so it really doesn't take that long to dry. Uh, I think I give it a half hour just to really build up some strength before I go and work on the second half. So here you can see the printed out sheets that I've already weathered uh, in the tea and dried in the oven overnight and I'm using them just to measure how long my dowel needs to be. Uh, I want a tight fit so that it looks like the dowel carrier has been made to fit the scrolls. Now I'm using an X-Acto razor saw to cut my dowel to length. Uh, I love this thing. It makes the smoothest cuts I've ever seen. If you ever have a chance to pick up an X-Acto razor saw, absolutely do it because it's a wonderful tool. A little hard to get started on wood though. But it makes short work of this of this 3 inch dowel. Just a few strokes and we're done. It's a very smooth cut too. Now I just glue on the other cap. So the next thing I'm thinking about with my dowel is how I'm actually going to attach the papers to the dowel. Uh, and I've decided to go with like a Coptic stitch kind of method where I drill a few holes, in this case five, into my dowel and just clean up the holes and then I stitch basically with, with string uh, the papers to the dowel. So I'm using my little pin tool that I made there. It's just a needle epoxied into a dowel. Uh, kind of as an awl, and I'm puncturing holes in the paper that line up with the holes in the dowel that I drilled, uh, and that'll allow me to sew the paper to the dowel, and I won't have to use any kind of adhesive or tape. You know, it'd be kind of weird if you ever untied this scroll and then there's a giant piece of duct tape uh, <laughs> or something holding the scroll to the dowel. That'd be that really break the immersion. So I'm using that toothpick just to hold it in place 
So I make sure that I line up my other uh, holes that I'm about to puncture. So now's the time to paint the wooden dowel, uh, the structure. I'm giving it a base coat of flat white spray paint just to seal up the wood and then I'm making it look semi-metallic with this Rust-Oleum metallic dark copper spray paint. So now I've, I've finished spray painting the ends of my dowels and they look really nice I think. They're glass smooth thanks to that primer coat and I just hit it with a little bit of steel wool after the white uh, to knock the grain down and then hit it with a coat of the metallic dark copper. And it came out looking very nice indeed. So now I, I go about sewing the, the papers onto the dowel. It's a little hard to get the needle through that many sheets of paper all at once. Uh, but just work at it, work one sheet at a time, and you'll get it lined up. And then, of course, the last step is to get the needle through the hole in the dowel. Make sure your pages are aligned and uh, begin sewing your dowel to your papers. There's a multitude of tutorials online about Coptic stitching, so I'm sure you can find out exactly how I'm doing this. Uh, but I'll try and leave a link in the description of the video which shows how I do this, which is this Coptic stitching securing. So now, now my scroll is structurally complete. It's attached to the dowel. In retrospect, I should have painted that middle section of the dowel, but uh, I don't ever intend on unraveling this scroll. It's simply a prop. So but you can see the same scroll in common Dwarvish and Elvish, and then of course a map of the Falkirk area, which is a city in my campaign setting. I've done a Wonder Draft video on that map and thought that uh, it would be nice to kind of ground this prop in the game that I'm playing right now. So there's the scroll rolled up. It looks very nice. And I've decided to secure it with two different braids. Uh, this one is just a simple three-strand braid, two silver, one red. Uh, I like the idea that a family, a noble family, would have family colors. Uh, and so you could totally change up the color and say, you know, anything from this noble family would be silver and red. And it would be kind of a way for an ancient people to recognize who the letter is from before they even open it. Now the image in the Dungeon Master's Guide shows like an interesting bead on the scroll. And I've attached that. This braid is an 8-strand Kumihimo braid. Four silver, two red, two gold. And I'm using that kind of to accentuate the scroll as well. I've just tied that on. The, uh, the image in the Dungeon Master's Guide also shows a tag on the scroll. The tag has like a carved face on it. And I am not skilled enough to make a carved face yet. So I just went to Michael's and I got this medallion which has a brass disc that you can glue into the center of it. And I'm using uh, a stamping set that I own in order to stamp uh, some letters onto that medallion and then glue it in place. Uh, again, it's not totally accurate to the Dungeon Master's Guide, but I think it's a nice little addition to the project. And I attach that tag onto the Kumihimo braid. And with that, this project is finished. <laughs>
Well guys, that's it for the letter of recommendation scroll. If you want to see me make more magical items from the D&D rulebooks, leave me a comment down below with suggestions on the next item. Please consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, as it really helps out my channel. As always, I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Stay safe. Peace.